Okay, so what's going to be happening in these videos is we're going to go over quite a few of the examples that are due for you, and you have to take the notes, okay? And this will be uh, worth a certain amount of grades for yourself. Um, there will be a few questions that I won't do that are due, uh, and those are the ones that I expect you to attempt on your own. Okay, and of course, if you have questions, you're more than welcome to ask. So this is chapter one. We're going to focus on 1.1. Now, chapter one, 1.1, uh, we're talking about ratios and proportions, okay? So these are essentially things to understand um, in the real world, uh, how much of something do we put in terms of something else? So for instance, something that we're all going to do uh, in our lives is make food, and we're going to follow instructions, even if that's being a great cook or not a great cook, um, even if it's like a pre-made thing, sometimes you have to add water, right? So it's for every cup of rice, you need two cups of water. Okay, so that is a ratio. Now again, you can go through this. We're gonna go through this example really quickly here. Um, it says, in a juice mixture, 750 milliliters are mixed with 250 milliliters of juice. Now, the big thing here is they're both already have the same units. So you need the same units in order to create a ratio. A ratio can either be represented as a fraction or a ratio is the one with the dots, okay? Now, recognize they decide what they're gonna put on the left and what they're gonna put on the right. It's very important to note that this can also be represented as a sentence. It can be concentrate to water. Okay, and in a ratio, you usually just replace this two with a colon. Okay, now recognize a ratio, you always want it in simplest form. So they put that 250 here, this 750 here, and then you want it in simplest form. So sometimes you're not going to get it right off the dot in simplest form. You might try and divide 250 and 750. So I'll show you what I mean. So maybe you put uh, 250 to 750 milliliters, okay? You don't need to know that 750 is divisible by 700 or 250. Sometimes it's a little bit of a guess and check. Maybe you recognize that both these things end in zero. Anytime a number ends in zero, you can divide by 10. So maybe you divide by 10 first off, and that becomes 250 divided by 10. So this, 250 divided by 10, gives me 25. 750 divided by 10 gives me 75. Well, you're not quite done. Maybe you recognize that these both things end in 5, so you can divide by 5. So we're just taking a longer way to get to a simplest form, but I just want to show you you don't have to know automatically what the biggest number they can divide by. That's also known as the greatest common factor, but that's not something we need to worry about too much. So 25 divided by 5 gives me 5. 75 divided by 5 gives me 15. And then you go, hey, both these things are divisible by 5 again. 5 divided by 5 gives me 1. 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. So whoever did this question knew immediately that they both could be divided by 250. That's not always going to be super obvious. If you need to take multiple steps to get to the simplest form, Please do so. Now, to mix a certain shade of green paint, a painter mixes 2.3 liters of blue paint with 1.7 liters of yellow paint. What is the ratio of blue paint to yellow paint? So you can already see it wants it a ratio, <clears throat> but it wants it to express, express as a fraction. So what that means is we're going to put, if you have blue paint to, remember that's the colon, yellow, this side, so the left-hand side, is always going to be the top part of your fraction. This is going to be the bottom part of your fraction. So here, for a fraction, we're going to put blue on top, yellow on the bottom. Now, really quickly, we already recognize that both these things are having the same units. So let's plug that in. We have 2.3 liters divided by 1.7 liters. Now recognize, liters and liters are both on the top and the bottom, so these can technically cancel out. So you get 2.3 over 
in a fraction and a ratio, you really never want units. Now, something to recognize here is you have decimals. We do not want decimals when you're talking about fractions or uh, ratios. Okay, you don't want decimals or fractions for fractions or ratios when you're talking about ratios. Of course, you can have fractions other times, but in this unit, you don't want decimals. So how do we get rid of it? Well, remember what you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. Something that you can do is always just multiply the number by 10 and see what happens. So I'm going to multiply this number by 10. And since I multiply the top number, I also have to multiply that bottom number. 2.3 times 10 gives me 23. 1.7 times 10 gives me 17. So that actually ended up getting rid of both the decimals, and now we have whole numbers. So there's our ratio. For every 23, whoa, sorry about that. For every 23 blue, you need 17 yellow. And that could be in terms of milliliters, that could be terms of um, liters, that could be kiloliters. That's the nice thing about having the same units. Once it gets rid of it, this is just general information for any time. So that could be for every 23 cups of blue, you need 23 cups of yellow. We could replace cups with milliliters now, or sorry, not 23, 17. This should be 17 cups of yellow. Remember that bottom number represents yellow. Okay, so biggest things here, we can take multiple steps to simplify. We can also take <clears throat> uh, some steps to get rid of the decimals. Okay, sometimes, and this next example will be a good one to go through. Now, for this example, I want B is going to be for homework. Okay, and we will do A and C together. So a cereal mixture contains six cups of oats, two cups of almonds, one cup of raisins, and three-fourths cups of coconut. Recognize this is in a fraction form. Three over four, let's put it into a decimal. So this is going to equal 0 0.75. Okay, you plug that in your calculator. How do I plug this into my calculator? Three over four is actually three divided by four. So that equals 0 0.75. So we actually have 0 0.75 cups of coconut. Okay, now what is the ratio of oats to raisins? Remember, 2 represents our colon here. And then we have oats on the left, raisins on the right. So find how many oats you need. We need 6 cups of oats, and recognize they're all in the measurements of cups. So this will be six, two, and how many raisins do we need? We need one raisin. So this is a six to one ratio. So if we decide to put six kilograms of oats, you're gonna need one kilogram of raisins. That's the nice part about ratios. Once we get rid of our units, we don't have to worry about them anymore. Okay, this is getting a little messy, so I'm gonna erase a few bit of this. B will be your homework, okay? Actually, let's do B together, because there's something that's important. I show you here. <clears throat> so what is the ratio of almonds to coconuts? So remember, this is now our two dots, and we'll have almonds to coconut. Now, how many almonds do we have? We have two here. Okay, so two almonds, or two cups of almonds, sorry, for every 0.75 cups of coconut. So good thing we converted that fraction into a decimal. So this is 0 0.75. Now, just like before, we don't want decimals, okay? So how do I get rid of decimals? Remember, multiply your number by 10. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So just because this has a decimal, we don't forget to multiply 10 over here. So 2 times 10 is 20. 0.75 times 10 is 7.5. We still have a decimal. Multiply by 10, what you do to one side, you do to the other. 20 times 10 is 200. Oops, sorry. Colon. 7.5 times 10 gives me 75. 
Now here, remember counting up by 25s, 25, 50, 75. So we know this thing's divisible by 25. We would actually also know this is divisible by 25 because any 100 number is always divisible by 25. Again, if you needed to take multiple steps, you're welcome to do so. But I know both of these things are divisible by 25. 200 div divided by 25, well, that will give me 8. 75 divided by 25 gives me 3. So the ratio of almonds to coconuts is an 8 to 3 ratio. Okay, so if we put 8 cups of almonds, we need 3 cups of coconut. Now, for C, it asks you for oats to total ingredients in the recipe. So oats to total ingredients. So we're going to have to do some addition here to figure out how many ingredients do we need in total. Well, the amount of cups you need is 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0.75. That's the total amount of ingredients you have here. So this is going to be 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 0.75. 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 0.75, that's going to give me 9.75. So how many oats do we need for this recipe? We need six cups and the total ingredients added up all together is 9.75 cups. Now you have to figure out and get rid of your decimal. So here I'm going to multiply by 10. I'm going to multiply this side by 10 because what you do to one side you do the other. That's 60 to 97.5. Multiply both sides by 10 again because you still have a decimal 600 to 975. And again any number that ends in a hundreds or 25, 50, 75 is always divisible by 25. So let's divide both of these things by 25 and see what we get. So 600 divided by 25, that gives me 24 to 975 divided by 25, which is 39, okay? I think I can still divide these things. I know 39 is divisible by three. Again, that might take a bit of guessing, okay? You might do 39 divided by two, it might not work. 39 divided by 3, hey, it works. Now check if it works over here. 24 divided by 3 does work because that gives me 8. 39 divided by 3 gives me 13. Again, are you expected to know this right away? No. Do a few guessing checks. See what numbers divide 39. See if the same numbers divide 24. And that would be the simplest form. So you have 8 to 13. Again, I might be moving a little fast, okay? But the best part about a video is you can pause it. So pause if you'd like, copy these things down. If you need to hear me say something again, just go back and rewatch. Okay, so that's pretty much ratios, okay? So there's a few questions on ratios there. Oh, now we're gonna move on to a bit of a different thing, okay? Ratios are gonna be able to help us solve for a certain given amount. Okay, so this is a very useful thing. And remember, this left side is representing oats, okay? This right side is representing all the ingredients. We can also represent this as a fraction. That is 8 over 13. The number on the left is the top number. The number on the right is the bottom number. This is a really useful fraction because if we are, say, say we want to do a recipe where we only use um, four cups of oats. Well, the question becomes, well, how many, how, what's the total ingredients? You can solve for that, and that's what we're going to go through next. Now, we're going to use cross multiplication and division. So if we look at this example here, a dirt bike requires 15 liters of gas to be mixed with four liters of oil. If you use 20 liters of gas, how much oil will you need? So the thing is you always want to figure out is what fractions can I use? Okay, where can I find a useful ratio or fraction? I can also put ratio here because remember ratios and fractions are, uh, 
are the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but they, they tell us the same thing. So in this case, we know that there's a ratio of 15 liters of gas to four liters of oil. So something I'm gonna do is I'm always gonna put gas on top and oil on the bottom. If you flip these two things, that's okay. It's gonna give you the same answer. So my 15 liters of gas is related to four liters of oil, okay? Now the question is, you're not always gonna put 15 liters of gas in. This time, our friend is gonna put 20 liters of gas. Then the question becomes, how much oil do I need? Okay, remember, we're always putting gas on top. So now we have this really useful fraction. So we're gonna put our 20 liters of gas over here. Okay, and we're gonna put, now we're solving for how much oil is related to 20 liters of gas. And here is cross multiplication and division. If you don't quite remember what cross multiplication division is, is whenever you have a setup such as this, and you're gonna see a lot of this in 20-3, is you're going to multiply the two numbers across from one another, so 20 times four, and then divide the remaining number. So this will be 20 times four divided by 15, and that will give you 5.3 liters of oil. So since we put 20 liters of gas in, you're gonna to have to mix that with 5 point liters of oil. And this is actually something you're gonna see in your life at one point. Uh, lots of lawn mowers use a gas to oil ratio. Let's do number five together. So if 10 centimeters on a map represents 25 kilograms of actual ground, okay, how many centimeters would 45 kilogram, kilometers of actual ground be on the map? Okay, so in this case, we have another ratio. So if 10 centimeters on the map represents 25 meters on actual ground. So here's our two things. We have a map and we have our actual ground. Don't just go straight to the numbers. What do those numbers relate to? I'm going to make a ratio where I have my map numbers on top and my, gra my actual ground numbers. I'm going to just represent it as actual, actual ground numbers on the bottom. So the ratio that's related is 10 centimeters to 25. So in this case, we're gonna put all my map numbers on top. So here we have 10 centimeters and that's related to 25. Um, I'm gonna not forget my uh, units here. 10 is related to 25. 20, 10 centimeters on the map represents 25 kilogram, kilometers on the ground. Now we have a really useful ratio. But in this time, we've measured 45 kilometers on the ground, and we want to put that on our map. Remember, don't forget your equation symbol. Our, how many centimeters would 45 kilometers? So we're trying to figure out how many centimeters is 45 kilometers. Well, remember, that's on the actual ground. So we're going to put our actual numbers on the bottom, and we're solving for the amount of centimeters that is on the map. So now we're set up in this uh, situation where we can use cross multiplication and division. So here we're going to cross multiply, so 10 times 45, because those are the numbers across from one another. 10 times 20, or sorry, 45. And then we're gonna divide the odd number out, divide 25. So 10 times 45, and you can plug that in the calculator just as you see it here. 10 times 45 divided by 25, and that gives me 18. And you don't want to forget your units. We're talking about it being on the map. The map is measured in centimeters. So that means this 45 kilometers represents 18 centimeters on our map. And that's how you do number five, okay? The cross multiplication is really important to understand. It's really important to understand. Figure out your first ratio. What numbers are always going on the top? What numbers are always going on the bottom? and then do cross multiplication and division. Okay, so we multiplied these two numbers and then divided the odd man out. Okay, so now on to number six. A recipe for corn chowder includes three cups of corn, two cups of water, one and a half cups. So how do we put this into a decimal? Because I want this in a decimal, this is kind of ugly. One, one half, all you simply do is that first number 
stays the same. And this is representing our decimal number. So here, plug this in your calculator. 1 over 2, well, that's 1 divided by 2. That equals 0 0.5. So anything after the decimal goes off the decimal here. So this is 1.5 here of cream. If you increase the yield of the recipe and use four and a half cups of cream, how much corn will you need? Well, remember, this represents four, and then we already know one over two is 0 0.5, so this is 4.5 cups of cream. Okay, so let's figure out what we need to do here. If you increase the yield of the recipe and use four and a half cups of cream, how much corn will you need? So we're trying to figure out um, the ratio between cream and corn, okay? So before I do anything, I'm gonna remind myself, I'm trying to figure out what the fraction or the ratio is between cream and corn. I'm gonna put corn on top and then cream on the bottom. This is gonna help me remember what I'm trying to do. What fraction am I trying to prove? Well, here is the recipe here. We need three cups of corn, so this is corn, three cups of corn for every one and a half cups of cream. So that 1.5 is going to go on the bottom. That's our cream. So now we have an awesome ratio we can use. And this time we're increasing to four and a half cups of cream. So remember, all of our cream numbers are going on the bottom. So 4.5 is going to go on the bottom. Now the question is, how much corn do we need? Well, that's X. Now we're going to perform our cross multiplication and division. You're going to notice we do have decimals here. We don't have to worry about it, okay? That's only when we're trying to figure out just the ratio numbers. But in this case, we're just trying to solve for x. So don't mind the decimals. So here, multiply the two across numbers and divide the odd number out. So this will be 3 times 4.5 divided by 1.5. 3 times 4.5 divided by 1.5 and that gives me 9. So there's our 9 cups of, <clears throat> of corn. Okay, so we need 9 cups of corn. Really understand what we did here. This is going to be huge moving forward. So now we're going into slope. Okay, there is a formula sheet for Math 20-1. You can find it on your course page. Um, I put it up here. Recognize you don't have to remember everything. We have M equals rise over run. Okay, you'll also be talking about this, but that will be later on in 1.2 and 1.3. So let's talk about slope. So slope, you're always going to deal with a right triangle okay we're not going to deal with any type any other type of right triangle what a right triangle is is where you have this leg and this leg meet and it's 90 degrees here okay now our slope okay is the fraction or the ratio of our rise over our run okay so that's what slope is slope is telling us for every numbers we rise, what is our run? So we've already been kind of seeing this, right? We've done lots of ratios and fractions here. But in this case, our slope is how much do we rise? And for every number we rise, how many numbers do we go for our run? Okay, sometimes this is also known as the horizontal. This can also be known as like elevation game, so on and so forth. Now, something to understand is your hypotenuse here. Okay, remember your hypotenuse, this is a right triangle. Remember how to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, usually one of the, the, the uh, sorry, the length across from your 90 degrees is usually represented as C, and then this can be A, and this can be B. A and B are interchangeable. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, this will be helpful moving forward. Okay, sometimes slope is represented by a little m. 
Okay, don't ask me why, but it's an M. Okay, so the ratio of your vertical distance over your horizontal distance. Okay, so we need to know how to do that. So let's do a few examples together. So here, they've done a few examples. Calculate the slope of the following situation. <clears throat> a wheelchair ramp rises three feet and the run is 18 feet. So if we draw a triangle here, and it would obviously look way nicer than that. Okay, if we do this, this is rise, this is run. Okay, and then we have our hypotenuse. We don't have to worry about this rise. Our rise is three feet here, and every three feet we rise, we need 18 feet here. This is actually really important in a wheelchair ramp. When St. Gabe's got their new school, we almost had a wheelchair ramp. We have that elevator instead. And the reason we went for that is because this is actually a true measurement, okay? Whenever contractors have to build a wheelchair ramp, for every three feet of rise, you need 18 feet of run. That's a lot of run, okay? And that's why we decided to go with the elevator. It saved us a lot more room. Anyways, we just simply put three over four, and you can leave it as a fraction. They simplified it here. What they did is they they noticed that we did both these numbers are divisible by three. Three divided by three is one. 18 divided by three is six. So that's one over six feet. They also put it as a fraction because one divided by six, that equals 0 0.17 feet. Okay, something to note here is, I don't know why they left feet here, okay? Slope does not have units, okay? So don't put feet there. Slope does not have units. Now, they do the same thing here. For some reason, they put the units. You don't want units. Let's do this question together. I would suggest always drawing a picture. Honestly, it helps a lot more. But a roof rises 18 feet over a horizontal distance of, or, or sorry, a roof rises 8 feet over a horizontal distance of 18 feet. We rise 8 feet, so vertically we're going 8 feet up, and every 8 feet up we have to go horizontally, which is the run. Horizontal is run. Horizontal is going from side to side, not up and down, of 18. So for every 8 feet up, we need to go 18 feet across. Okay? And this could be a ramp. Well, this is the roof. This is the slant of the roof. So here, remember, slope, which is represented as M, is rise over run. How much do we rise? We rise 8. And for every 8 feet, we go 18 feet across, which is run. Both these numbers we can divide down. I'm going to divide this number by 2 and this number by 2. What you do to the top, you do to the bottom. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So that's 4 over 9. So now we have the slope. Okay, We could also put this as decimal. 4 divided by 9. That gives me... Oh, sorry about that. That gives me 0 0.44 as our slope. Okay. I'm going to leave this one for you to try, okay? So this is for kind of homework. Try this one out on your own. And remember, if you need to pause the video and finish copying, please do so. If you need to rewind and listen to me talk again, please do so. Okay, now <clears throat> we have this awesome way to set up a ratio for slope, but we're not always going to follow the guidelines, okay? We're not all, like in this case... This is a guideline. Every time we go eight feet up, we need 18 feet across. Some roofs are a lot higher than eight feet. So we need to figure out, well, what if we build a roof 17 feet high? How much run do we have to get? That would be a really long roof. And this is going back to this type of question here. We can set up a ratio and cross multiply divide to solve. This one's kind of nice because we're always putting rise on top and run on the bottom. So here, the slope of a staircase is 0.95. If it rises 210 centimeters, what is the run? Okay, well in this case, 
we have rise over run, which equals slope. So we have this equation, okay? We have what slope is. Slope is 0 0.95. So we can just simply put 0 0.95 equals rise over run. And in this case, how much rise do we have? Well, we have 210 centimeters. So I'm gonna put that as our top number. So 0 0.95 equals 210 over run. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, that doesn't look like what we were talking about here. Anytime you have a whole number, we can simply just put it over one because any number divided by one is the same. And now you can cross multiply and divide to solve for run. So run is gonna equal these two numbers that are gonna multiply 210 times one dividing 0 0.95. So run equals 210 divided by 0 0.95. And that gives me 221 centimeters, okay? So that's how you set up if they just simply give you slope, okay? Sometimes you have to solve for slope like this one. The slope of a hill is three over 190. They left it as a fraction and cross multiplied and divide, which is totally cool. They could have also done 300, or sorry, three divided by 190 and gotten a fraction for it, which is 0 0.0157, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is your slope. Remember, slope equals rise over run. And you don't actually have to remember that because it's on your formula sheet, okay? So remember, you can print off your formula sheet and use that, but if you see here, it's on your formula sheet, which is super awesome, okay? So m equals rise over run, you simply just have to remember n represents slope. So in this case, we could have set it up, they set it up as a fraction, we could have put our decimal in here for slope, so 0 0.0157 equals, and what did they give us? They gave us the rise of 400. So that goes on top, and you can solve for run. Here, all you do is put this over 1, cross multiply, and divide. So 400 times 1 divided by 0 0.0157, and what do you know? You're going to end up getting... The same number as here. It'll be a little bit off because we've rounded this, but I understand if you round it, okay? So that is why they set up a fraction. I would suggest just leaving as a fraction and doing cross multiplication and division. 190 times 400 divided by 3. If they just give you the slope in a decimal form, simply just put it on the one side, put it over 1, and cross multiply and divide. Okay, so let's look at a new question. The slope of a street is 0.54, okay? So remember, as soon as you start seeing slope pop up, remind yourself what is the equation. Slope equals rise over run. So we have what slope is, it's 0.54. If it covers 28 meters of horizontal distance, what is the rise of the street? Okay, so in this case, they gave us the horizontal distance. Remember, horizontal is the run. And we're trying to figure out how much it rises. So here, this will be 0 0.54, okay, because that's our slope, equals rise, okay. We're solving for rise, and the run, which goes on the bottom, is 28 meters. Now you can cross multiply and divide for the rise. Remember, if you have a whole number, put it over one to make it a fraction. The two numbers across from each other is 0.45 and 28, so this is 0 0.54 times 28, and divide the last number out, 1. And that's going to equal your rise, 0.54 times 28 divided by 1 gives me 15.12, okay? And that would be meters, and that would be our solution. They rounded it to 1, we just simply left it as 1, 2, for 0.12. Okay. I want you to try 13 out on your own. 
Okay, you should be able to answer this now. Recognize they left the slope as a fraction. I would simply just leave it as a fraction. Slope equals rise over run, right? And the horizontal distance is your run. So if we want to set this up, slope is 17 over 10. And our horizontal distance, which is our run, is 1.5. So you put 1.5 on the bottom and x on the top. I want you to solve for x. How do I solve for x here? Make sure you can get this number. Okay. And if you do, awesome. I want you guys to do number two on your own, okay? I want you to do number three on your own. I'm just reading this question over here. Okay, so let's look at number four together. A safe slope for a ladder is one foot of run for every four feet of rise. Vincent needs to use a ladder to reach a window still that is 22 feet above the ground. How far from the house should the base of the ladder be? So in this case, we have a few things. We have a slope of run and rise. Remember, slope equals rise over run. So here, what is our uh, what is our run? Our run is one foot, and every time we go one foot over, we need four feet up. So that means our slope is one foot on the bottom, because it's our run, for every four feet of rise. Okay, so now we have a slope. But this time, I guess we're going to build a ladder, or we need a ladder that needs to go 22 feet high, okay, above the ground. So that means this is our new rise. It wants to know how far should we put the ladder away from the base of the house. Simply meaning, if we draw this, there's our house. Okay, pretty ugly house, that's okay. And there's our ladder. You can notice it looks like a triangle. Okay, this is 22 feet high. Okay, sorry, I don't know why my pen's freaking out a little bit here. And it's asking for the run now. So we have a slope. Slope equals rise over one. Let's plug this in. So this is four over one. Four over one. And remember, our rise is going to go on the top. Our new rise is 22 over the run. And now we can solve for how this distance. Cross multiply, so this number multiplied by the number across from it. So 22, so our run is going to equal 22. Oh my goodness. 22 times 1 divided by four. The number kind of left out here. So 22 times one divided by four, and that gives me 5.5 feet. And there is our solution, okay? We need this to be 5.5 feet across. Okay, well, this is kind of a good uh, spot to stop, okay, because you should be able to now answer the remaining questions. So I'm going to have you do number five, I'm going to have you do number six, and I'm going to have you do number nine. So again, I may go a little fast in the videos, but that's because I want you to be practicing and listening and rewinding the questions and writing down the solutions. These questions that you have to do for homework, make sure you give them a shot, okay? Try your best. If you need a, any help, please email me or come in and ask questions, which would even be better. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a good day.